Hey guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So one of the most powerful functions of Studio One, arguably, is the ability to slow down or speed up any kind of audio material that you can imagine. It could be vocals, a piano sample, it could be drums, and there's several modes to choose from depending on what kind of material you're working with. So let's take a look at the ones that are available so that you can choose the best one for your individual application. First, let's cover some of the basics. There's two different kinds of approaches to time stretching in Studio One, the event-based and the track-based time stretching. Event-based time stretching only works on the specific regions here on your individual tracks. So for example, if I hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the Windows PC, I can make this specific event here faster or slower without affecting the other two. Track-based time stretching, on the other hand, can be set on a per-track basis by opening up the track inspector, which you can do by clicking here or pressing the F4 key. Here you're gonna notice the tempo field, and if you set this to time stretch, then the original tempo of that file is going to be beat matched to match your current song tempo. This behavior can also be set by default, by the way, here in the song settings, which means that any audio file that you're going to import into the song is going to be playing in time with everything else, provided that the time signature is similar. So now that we know about the basic differences between track-based time stretching, which affects any event on a track, and event-based time stretching that's really just affecting your selection, it's interesting to note that time stretch mode, which can also be set here in the track inspector, is going to be affecting both methods. So any kind of time stretching that you're doing in Studio One will change its sound depending on what mode you have set here. And I wanna talk about the differences here briefly so that you can always pick the right one that's gonna work with your respective material. The first time stretch mode and the one that's always selected by default for new tracks is time stretch drums. This works great on any kind of percussive material in particular because it does a great job at keeping the transients intact. Check it out. Notice how the drums really uh, maintained the punch here while some other modes such as sound and solo that we're gonna discuss next would put more emphasis on keeping the pitch exactly as it was. When time stretching entire songs to a new song tempo, for example, when you wanna DJ with Studio One or something like that, I would actually advise to go with time stretch drums because I consider it to be the most universal algorithm. But if you have some very specific melodic parts that need to sound as good as possible, even when stretched to a new tempo, then you should consider working with sound or solo. Now the difference is that sound works great with polyphonic material like chords and solo works great with uh, pitches that are only one note at a time. So for example, a vocal would be a great example for that. To demonstrate the difference between using time stretch drums and time stretch sound on a piano chord, for instance, let's listen to this example here before it's time stretched. And now let's time stretch that by holding down Option on the Mac or Alt on Windows and make it, you know, quite a bit longer and listen to it with time stretch drums. If you listen with headphones, you can probably tell that there's quite a bit of fluttering all of a sudden in this piano, like the sustained notes have some kind of weird vibrato to them, and that's because the algorithm tries so hard to preserve the integrity of the transients, meaning the onset, like the punch of each individual note, even though that's not really the most preservable thing or the high priority thing to preserve in this audio material, right? Instead, we should really try to keep the tone intact and that's why I think time stretch sound would do a much better job here. Listen to this. There's much less fluttering in my opinion. Sound just does a better job in general when working with these kinds of polyphonic materials. Time stretch solo works great, particularly on vocals, as I mentioned, solo guitars or any kind of monophonic instrument, meaning any instrument that plays just one note at a time. To compare this, let's try to stretch this vocal here using the standard algorithm and then listen to it right after when time stretch solo is engaged. First, let's listen to it in the original state. I'll be your dream maker 
every night and day. Okay, and then let's go ahead and stretch that quite a bit longer using the standard drums algorithm. I'll be your dream maker. You can really hear how the formants are getting stretched here. And now let's do a direct AB comparison with solo. Dream maker, dream maker. Versus. Dream maker. Right? It's definitely quite a bit better. Both are usable, but if you want to go for the best result with monophonic material like this, go for solo. Now, if you're looking for a tape style approach, like on old tape machines or these archive samplers, where slowing down audio would also lower the pitch and speeding it up would increase the pitch, then look no further than the time stretch tape algorithm that was added in Studio One 5. This is fantastic on drums, like if you just need a slight tempo correction and you don't mind a bit of a pitch shift, I mean, this will really preserve the best possible quality. And I actually also really like this on vocals. Um, for example, let's listen to the uh, vocal that we just time stretched with tape. I'll be your dream maker. Can be really cool with a reverb, just saying. I'll be your dream As you can see, each of the time stretch modes in Studio One has their own individual application where they truly shine. And hopefully the differences between them are a bit clearer now. Thank you for watching.